Good morning and happy Sabbath. I'd like to welcome everyone here today. It's nice to see all of you. I've been able to talk to a couple people this morning. But I want to welcome those that are here. Any new visitors that we have, if we have any, I want to welcome you. Returning visitors, or we like to call new, new, um, new members, whether you're officially a member or not, we'd like to welcome you. And those that are watching at home that maybe can't be here, um, we want to give you a welcome also. And I noticed some beautiful flowers over here. And I want to recognize those. I've seen those flowers before because they were in the car coming over. So these are um, sponsored by my wife and I in just for God's blessings and specifically the blessing of our youngest child who is turning 12 in a couple days. So if you see him, you can say a nice happy birthday to him. It might embarrass him. <laughs> Which is always a benefit. Um, also, um, just a couple meetings that we have. We have an elders meeting that we're going to have after church at 1230. And I know we have a lot of meetings. We also have a departmental head meeting, which is going to happen right after that. I think that's at 130. So if you are on any of these things, don't be in a hurry. Come plan. And there's one impromptu meeting that we're going to have, and I want to just make an announcement to the church, too. Our um, pastoral search committee has been voted in, and I have been in contact with Elder Park with the conference and spoke with him this week, and he wants our first meeting to be the last week of August. And I want to meet with the um, pastoral search committee for just like two to three minutes. I've spoken with you all individually. Just, we're just going to set the date whether it's the 29th, the 30th, or the 1st, and we're getting our process moving. So for those who have been wondering what's going on with the pastoral search, we'll have our initial meeting the last week in August. And kids, how many kids do we have here? I don't see a lot of kids in here. But I believe there is a game night. I see a couple here. So uh, kids and youth game night tonight, and that's going to be at 7 o'clock. You'll have a Vespers before. Come have some fun. It's always nice for the kids to get together and do what kids do, right? And we also have, um, I, I want to welcome our speaker today. It's Enoch Yoon. He's been here before. You might recognize him, but want to give a special welcome as he helps share a message for us today. And the last thing that we need to do is we want to vote outgoing members. Not that we want to, but we have the Felicianos, that's Michael, Bernice, Ashley, and Valerie, to the Sutter Hill SDA Church, and that is in Sutter Creek, California. We love to have them. We still talk with them, but they live, what, seven hours away, so it's kind of hard for them to make it here on Sabbath. So they found a new church home, and with our blessing, we would like to entertain a motion to... Um, recommend their, them for transfer. It's been first. Is there a second? All in favor? It is passed. And that is it for our announcements this morning. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, our Creator, I just want to ask for your presence to be amongst us today as we come here to worship you and to praise you for your God of heaven and earth. I pray that you will accept our worship and be amongst us today. In Jesus' name I pray all these things. Amen. morning church I hope you have a good week happy to be here bless our lift up our service with song uh, singing for a few songs from our hymn our first song is rock of ages Go. 
is six I invite you all to stand.
Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. It's uh, a blessing to be here. And I'm doing the call of the offering. And for this Sabbath, the focus specifically is on the Christian record services for the blind, which is a day for members and visitors at our church across the U.S. and the territories to join together in giving for the life-transforming work of the ministry. So therefore, when you give today, You'll help share free resources and programs with children, teens, and adults who are blind, including scholarship for national camps for blind children, Bibles, Bible studies, phone faith, and a huge library of resources in accessible formats, including Braille, large prints, and audio. But even more importantly, with support from compassionate friends like you, we'll share the love and comfort and hope of Jesus. And with that in mind, I would like to read... Uh, Psalms 37, verse 5, he says that, Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Can I have the deacons to stand, please? Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity where we get to co-labor with you. So we humbly ask, Father, that with the means that you have provided for each one of us, and may you please help us to be faithful. But should any of us are not in that position today, Father, then may you please uh, help us and guide us, open the doors need to be open and close doors need to be closed. So that, O Lord, may any challenges that we have financially, O Lord, may you open up the way. Um, to redeem us and to help us. For we know, Father, you own cattle upon the thousand hills. All the gold and silver are yours, Father. We're simply your steward, managing what belongs to you, first and foremost. So bless uh, the offerings, O oh Lord, may it go in such a way that can help us to bring uh, the work of the gospel into fruition that may Jesus come very soon. Amen.
All right, church, it's now time for children's story. I'm going to have my brother Carlos back there. Change it for me. There you go. Um, and like we do every week, we have the kids go up and down and collect an offering, and you guys know what that offering's for. Um, but can you change the slide for me? If you wanted to do something a little bit more, we have this thing called the Club 200. And what this does is uh, it's $20 a month for the next 10 months. And this goes to help uh, supply the need, the financial need for some of the kids who are attending San Antonio Christian School to, to pay for the tuition. So in addition to our Lambs offering, if you would like to join this club, $20 a month for 10 months. That's it. Um, and if you have any questions, you could talk to our head elder and maybe... Yeah, not Pastor Hein. He's not here anymore. Uh, maybe our treasurer, too? Yes, okay, we're treasurer. Where is she at? Sonia. All right, but come down for a story after. Good to see you guys. Happy Sabbath. All right. So today we're going to be talking about something. It's kind of big. It's kind of heavy. When you start falling asleep, it, it moves to the side like this. You know, sometimes when you're, you're not smart and your dad knocks on your head and says, hey, is there air in there? No? You guys never had that? Well, we're going to talk about our brain and how awesome. How awesome is our brain? How awesome is your brain? Do you guys know? Liam has a big brain? Oh, your, your brain. Oh, Aiden's brain is better than Liam's brain. He wants to, everybody to know that. <laughs> but how awesome is your brain? Do you guys know? Anybody know? Do you guys, who, ha, who in here has an awesome brain? Wow. I mean, we're here, right, on the Sabbath day worshiping the Lord. Did God make junk or did he make awesome stuff? Awesome stuff. Show adults in the audience, who has an awesome brain? We all do. But... I had some experiences in my life where I'm like, how did my brain know how to do that so quickly? So, you guys know what that is, right? It's like, oh, that's kind of gross. That's inside my head right now? That's, that's what's inside the skull? Is that that thing? It doesn't look too interesting, right? It's like, how does that thing make me do all the things I'm doing now? I don't know. But guess what? When you start doing stuff, your brain gets like supercharged, right? And your brain, uh, I don't know if you could read it, a kind of small font, but it says, it takes your brain 13 milliseconds. Do you know how fast that is? It's like that. 13 milliseconds to recognize what you are looking at. It also takes your brain, or it takes uh, your brain to function 30 to 40 milliseconds for your eyes to blink. So everybody go ahead and blink right now. How fast was that? That was, that was really fast, right? Okay. It also takes, depending on, on what you feel, 120 to 400 milliseconds for your brain to signal a signal to a part of your body. So, like, if you were to pinch yourself or stub your toe or hurt yourself in any way, it takes... It's pretty quick, huh? He slapped himself in the arm. Yeah, that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't feel good. It takes 120 to 400 milliseconds, depending on, on the severity of the pain, for your brain to register, like, ow, that hurt. Also, did you know our brains never sleep? Even though your body might be at rest, your brain is still working because it's keeping your heart pumping, it's keeping your lungs, uh, you know, breathing in and out. You know, all your bodily functions are still working. So I was like, man, that's really cool. So this is, uh, what is this person right here? He's a baseball player. What is he doing? Yes, he's a major league pitcher, my favorite team, and one of my favorite players. 
okay? He's throwing a baseball. He's a, a major league pitcher. And I started thinking about, like, some awesome stuff that happened to me in Little League. I was like, man, the brain must be really awesome because when the pitcher was throwing the ball and I was up to bat, I could actually, not every time, but most of the time, when the ball was coming at me, I could actually see the stitches on the ball. It was weird. I'm just like, like sometimes I would just sit there and look at it like, what is going on? But I remember it so vividly, like, wow, I can see the ball, and all of a sudden just swing the bat, and it's gone. And I was like, man, that's really cool. And now that I'm older, I'm like, wow, that, that's really fascinating to me how my brain works. Now, what is this? Legos, everybody knew what that one is, right? So, uh, yes, yeah, your favorite thing to step on? Yes, well, I have a story, okay? I have a story, and I believe it was Chloe. I was carrying her, right? So, oh, me and Chloe, that's not really us, but... <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to take her upstairs because I think she needed a nap or something. This is years ago. And, you know, Legos, right? They're small, they fall down and get stuck in the carpet, right? So I was walking up the stairs carrying baby Chloe. <gasps> and guess what? I stepped on a Lego, okay? Now, what do you think happened? She, yeah, no, she's still here. <laughs> okay, my brain was doing this. Ah, this is how I feel when I step on a Lego, okay? I don't have another picture to show, but my brain registered the pain. As I was beginning to fall, I stepped on my right foot. My left foot picked up to step on the next step so I didn't fall with the baby. It picked up. I was able to, like, kneel down and roll. So I fell on my back, and the baby was still on, on my chest. I was like... Thinking back now, I'm like, wow, I didn't see the Lego, I felt the Lego, but my brain was still able to help me to recognize the kind of danger I was in. I didn't want to drop Chloe, so I sacrificed another body part and then another body part so that she could be safe. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> now, there's something else, okay? Those things happen really quick, right? There's something else that's going to happen really, 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 really quick when Jesus comes again. Especially, you know, for those who are alive and also those who are dead. What does it say? What is that? And I, yes, but this is one of my favorite verses right here. 1 Corinthians 15, 52. In a moment, it says, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Right? This mortal body is going to change into what? What are we going to have? We are mortal now. What are we changing to? Immortal. This corruptible is going to change into what? Incorruptible, right? I couldn't find a good picture, but man, that glorious sight. We're going to shed this, this ugliness. I might actually get to my, uh, when I was younger, I said I was going to be 6'5", 225. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. I'm, I'm only 5'9". I was getting closer to 225, but I started losing weight. <laughs> okay, but can you imagine at the blink of an eye, you're going you're gonna to blink and, and Silas is going to be totally different. you would be like, brother, wow, you look handsome now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So the awesomeness, I mean, how awesome is our brain? I mean, we just saw some examples right there, but I can't wait to see when that day happens, when we blink and Jesus gives us that gift and we're going to be totally changed and we're going to have those glorified bodies like we were meant to have. All right, so I hope you guys remember that story. Uh, let's bow our heads for a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much um, just for the, the things, dear God, that we take for granted. Um, you know, we don't know how all our bodily functions work. Um, sometimes we don't even think about them. But we, we're so glad that you gave us a brain and gave us a body that we could do the things that we do. And help us to um, use these for good, dear God. Help us to do a work for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Well, a few moments ago, we did one thing that churches don't like to do, and that's vote out members. But now we're going to do the part that we love to do, which is welcome new members. So if we can have the Raya family join us, all of you guys, um, we're going to welcome them and vote them into membership, but I want to make sure you guys know who they are. Come on, Bethany. (laughs) All right, so many of you probably have not really been introduced to the Raya family. This is David and his wife, Damaris, and Bethany and Nathan. And they actually have been attending here for quite a while. They were coming here quite regularly. Uh, they had their kids in Sabbath school before COVID. And then, of course, COVID hit. We, they were in our online Sabbath school, and now they're back, and they've asked to transfer their membership here. So I'm very happy for that. So do we have a motion that um, we vote them into membership here? We have a motion, a second. All in favor? Awesome. Wave at them. Say hi and welcome. I have a little gift for you guys, or not me, the church. Um, oh, it's heavy. So to welcome you guys, and we appreciate you guys joining us, and we look forward to, and Miss Damaris here, hey, Nathan, can I shake your hand? Miss Damaris actually helped us with our vacation Bible school, and she did a fabulous job, so we're happy to have you guys. We look forward to uh, lots of good times with you guys, so welcome to the family. Test, test. Good morning, church family. Um, I'm actually not on the bulletin this morning, but I actually have a surprise segment for you guys. Um, for those of you who don't know, early this year I, was on, I had the opportunity to go on a missionary trip. And a couple weeks ago I presented on like, what we actually did out there. And today I'm actually doing the second part in which I'm showing the video that was actually created out there. So if audiovisual can put it up, please. I will be presenting that now. Today is probably going to be our hardest day here in Ushuaia. Uh, There's just a lot of glow that we need to get out. And to be honest, it's not going to be easy. So I'm really trusting in the Lord and having faith that He's going to provide a way and give us the energy and and swiftness to reach this goal. Um, But yeah, it's not going to be easy. Imagine coming to the southernmost city in the world and attempting to get out 100,000 tracks. That is exactly what we're going to be doing over the course of the next week. The reason we came to Ushuaia is because when we do a mission trip with GLOW, we want to go to places that are awesome. And what I mean by that is places that are super remote, places that have hardly any Adventist presence, or places where There's just even a lot of people that are seeking spiritual truths. And Ushuaia is awesome. I mean, there's just a few small churches down here. They oftentimes get neglected, and we get to come down here and just help them spread the gospel throughout their local communities. I think, you know, Glow Tracks in itself is powerful. I think they can reach millions of people that we ourselves as individuals can't reach. They hold so much power. Yes, so here we have three different tracks. Um, we have one that says, Porque voy a iglesia en sábado, why do I go to church on Saturday? Which just gives you a brief explanation of why, as a Seventh-day Adventist, we go to church on sa- Sabbath, Saturday. We have another track here that says, Pasa, Pasos para para su salud, which talks about health. And then we have another one, which is called El Fin del Mundo, The End of the World. So this is our glow bag. With this bag, we contain all, as much as we can carry of glow in here. 
But what we like to do is have two of the glow as well as one. And so this has all three of the glow that we are distributing. In situations like this, where you're doing mass distribution, you know, like the sower sowing the seeds on the field, um, it's it's very advantageous to have small literature, small literature because you can carry a lot um, because it's very inexpensive if somebody discards it. Um, and also the, the tracks lead to books as well. They're like, I think Ellen White says, little wedges, you know, and they can lead to larger publications. The back of each one of these tracks advertises a, a book that people can also get. I truly believe that while we're out here, while I'm doing ministry, you know, helping others, you know, hear about the gospel or bring a revival, it truly brings a revival in my own life and I feel deeply impacted by it because I myself feel as though I'm being uplifted by what I see. I, we experience powerful testimonies that we see God's hand at work firsthand and you just can't help but be touched by it. Eh, mi sueño, uno de mis sueños era ser misionera y bueno, se ha presentado esta oportunidad eh, de que sea en mi país en, y más acá en Ushuaia que realmente es un lugar hermoso y la gente también muy, muy buena entonces bueno, eso, creo que Dios es el que maneja los tiempos maneja cada situación, y cada circunstancia y creo que he sido una bendecida y me siento muy mimada por eso. Between today and tomorrow, we need to get out 39,600 tracks with uh, our now seven people. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so that translates to roughly 28 packs per person per day. So this is a pack, 2,800 tracks per person per day. This is the this is the territory that we're going to be working today. It's uh, we're going to be doing the downtown section yep. of uh, Ushuaia, which is where you have a lot of the touristy kind of stuff. People come in with um, boats and ships and stuff. And if you have tourists, they're basically there. Yeah, because of various circumstances, we're only having about four and a half hours <coughs> of outreach time today. <laughs> so they're going to have to crank to get those things out. Yeah, so right now we're on our first drop of the day and we're passing out the glow tracks and the Sabbath, health, and then the second coming. And we're, or as you can see, I was doing these cars, going up the cars and hopefully getting people as I go. So in general, I would consider myself an introverted person. Um, I'm not anti-social or anything, but I do definitely struggle like maybe like starting a conversation sometimes or just approaching people. But I think definitely the Holy Spirit has really guided me with doing God's work and being a missionary, you know, whether that was being youth rush or being here um, all the way in Argentina. You know, my Spanish, I speak Spanish, it's not perfect, but you know, I feel like my Spanish is surprisingly better when doing this work for some reason. So like I said, I just believe the Holy Spirit really guides us when communicating with people, with doing God's work. And overall, um, you know, people have been very receptive. I've been doing it and um, continue to keep doing it until we reach our goal. Well, so today is gonna be like a really uh, cram uh, day, crammed day, um, because on Sabbath, we did not have a full day of outreach because of church. And yesterday, we also um, had a less than optimal day because we went to territory in the morning that we thought was gonna be really good in terms of the amount of people and cars there, but because it was a Sunday, it ended up not being that good. So basically part of the morning was, uh, yeah, we, we were putting out tracks quite slowly. So <laughs> the, the result is that basically we have about half of our inventory left. Uh, for a period that was supposed to be like two and a half days. Now we need to squeeze that into one day, so it's really stretching us. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy, but we're, we're gonna aim for it. 
I honestly don't know how we're gonna do it. We looked at so many options of you know where to reach the most people, uh, but we decided to go back uh, to downtown Ushuaia and do the parking lots. Uh, but like I said before, I really don't know how we're gonna get this goal, but uh, with God, all things are possible. So I'm really trusting in the Lord and having faith that he's gonna provide a way and give us the energy and, and swiftness to reach this goal. Um, but yeah, it's not gonna be easy. I have about 12 packs um, in my bag currently. My goal is to get 24 packs out today. So at the moment, I'm about to finish my first pack. We just started the day, uh, but hopefully I'm able to finish all 24 packs. Through God's grace, it's gonna be a lot, it's gonna be hard. Um, so we just gotta keep working and praying and praying and working. So hopefully we get all of it done today. We see many cars, and so it's been going really well just because we've been able to pass out a ton of them. I've passed out six packets already, and it's been close to an hour already. And so we're doing really good, very pumped. <laughs> so at first, I completely doubted. I was terrified that we wouldn't even get it out. But I think now being out here and really seeing that there is a lot of people, a lot of people and cars, I do think it is possible. <laughs> We may take a little bit home though. <laughs> it's time, man. People are looking around. They're seeing what's going on with COVID. They're seeing what's going on with these natural disasters, droughts, tornadoes, whatever. And uh, they're intelligent, just like us. They think, what's going on? What's going on? And uh, the Bible has something to say about it. So that's why we're out here passing out these tracks. One of the easiest ways to get the message is to give it in literature. I can't speak Spanish very well, but these pamphlets, they say it all. You know, at the very end of the day, uh, we finished around, I believe it was eight o'clock. We were working this one strip of businesses where there's a lot of people, a lot of cars, and it was this amazing moment where we all came together um, and passing out glow after glow until we finally passed out our last glow. And it was an amazing feeling knowing that we finished this super big goal with only six people. To somebody who is thinking about coming to this trip, I would say don't even think about it twice, just come. This experience truly is one that is life changing and it's so beautiful to just see how you can impact somebody else's life, but truly how your own life can be impacted too. So this mission trip that we're doing down here to the southern tip of the world in Ushuaia, Argentina is just the beginning. In fact, next year we are working with the Bolivian Union to distribute three million tracks in one day. And just prior to that, we're gonna have a week long outreach where we're gonna be going and passing out literature to several villages that have no Adventist presence. After that, in the year 2024, we're planning the single largest distribution of literature in the history of the Adventist church. We're working with the three unions in the Philippines to distribute 50 million tracts in one day. And again, just prior to that mass distribution, we're gonna have a team coming together into the Philippines to distribute literature all throughout the country. So if you're interested in learning more information about these mission trips and others that GLOW is putting together, you can visit our website, glowmissiontrips.org, where you can register and you can learn all kinds of information. We'll see you out on the front lines. Testing, testing. What do you guys think about the video? Amen, correct? <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you very much. Um, so yes, let's just say that trip was back in April, and it was such a blessing to be able to take part in that trip. And uh, next year, we're headed to Bolivia, God willing, and going to triple that goal of three million. So keep us in your prayers for that. And just a little update on some of the work that we did out there. Uh, I got word from Argentina that after our um, week-long missionary there, 
they had about 10 Bible study contacts that were reached just by passing out these glow tracks. And they're doing Bible studies, and there's many more testimonies that we believe are happening behind closed doors that, we don't even, that we're not even aware about. So continue to keep glowing your prayers, future missionaries in prayer, and um, thank you so much. I ask those who are able to kneel with me as we seek the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we are so thankful and, and gracious this morning that we can be here to worship you. Thank you, dear Lord, for the very inspiring um, mission, the GLOW mission that we've seen and heard this morning and for inspiring us to be uh, missionaries for you. Dear Lord, we also thank you for this very beautiful Sabbath day. Thank you for the blessings that you have given us throughout the week. Dear Lord, we thank you for the gift of salvation for your son, Jesus Christ, and for his righteousness that covers us uh, today. Dear Lord, we ask that you would forgive us and that we, as we prepare our hearts and our minds to hear your word in, um, this morning. Dear Lord, we also come to you with burdens in, in our hearts that have been weighing us down all week. Lord, you know our silent prayers, whether they be for uh, something that is weighing our hearts with our relationships, with our health finances or maybe with our jobs or at school lord we ask that you would answer we ask that you would respond to our requests that you would intercede in ways that you only can in accordance to your will and dear lord remind us that you have a plan for us lord you are our shepherd and because of that we believe that we shall not want we ask for your strength and your guidance. Be with our church leadership as we seek for a new pastor. And also this morning, dear Lord, we ask for a special blessing for Dr. Yoon as he delivers us your message. Anoint his lips that we might be blessed by your word. And so, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Prepare our hearts now to accept your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Seventh Church. Our scripture reading is found in Romans 3, 11 and 12. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Happy Sabbath, Ontario Church family. It's a blessing to be here to worship once again with you. Uh, the last time I was here, my wife Charity was uh, pregnant, and now uh, we have a five-month-old uh, son who's here with us today. His name is Ezekiel Micah Yoon. Now I finally understand when people say children are one of the greatest gifts and blessings uh, from God, because in the past few months, my heart has just been overflowing with gratitude towards God. And typically, when I'm asked to share a message, I like to center my message on the love of Jesus because that is what resonates with me, that is who I know Jesus to be, and that is what has transformed my own life. Uh, today, it's not going to be any different, but it will take on a slightly more serious tone. And the reason for that is because in my own personal devotions in the past few weeks, I have 
felt a message speaking to me and has convicted my heart. And I share that message with you, hoping that it will convict your hearts as well. And uh, as the title, uh, it's not up there, but the title of the sermon today is Awakening from Our Slumber. And uh, with a title like this, I hope that I don't catch anyone falling asleep in the sermon today. <clears throat> uh, let us pray before we begin. Oh, precious Jesus, I want to ask you to be with me right now. May it be your words that are spoken today in your message. I pray, despite my weaknesses and my flaws, that your message will go forth in power. Send your Holy Spirit to be amongst us. In Jesus' name I pray all these things. Amen. On July 21, 1861, uh, it was just the beginning of the Civil War here in the United States. And on this particular day, people were getting ready to go on a picnic. Uh, and they were getting dressed up in their fancy clothes, uh, getting their horses and carriages ready. They were packing their picnic bags, their picnic baskets with food, and they were uh, pulling out their opera glasses. And they were headed to a picnic to watch the first battle of the Civil War, called the Battle of Manassas in Virginia. And it wasn't long before they woke up to the realities, because initially they had thought, uh, they had this notion that war of war, uh, never having been in war before, they had these notions of war uh, being a glorious thing and being full of romance. But it was not long before they were awakened to the realities of what war truly is. As they witnessed the bloodshed and the glory and the death on the battlefield. And as the battlefield uh, started creeping closer and closer to where they were, they got up and quickly sped off as fast as possible. And it says that carriages were colliding with each other, uh, wheels were falling off carriages, people were disconnecting their carriage from their horse and riding horseback without uh, even a saddle. And we could look back now and wonder um, and think how absurd and how ridiculous and how naive of them to uh, think that they could go to a battle and have a picnic. But do you realize that we are also in the midst of a great war right now? And yet, how many times and how often do we approach this war as if it is just a picnic? In the Bible, it mentions and over and over again that we are in a war. Paul writes in Ephesians, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. The apostle Peter writes, Beware your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And in Revelations, John writes, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war on the remnant of her seed, which are those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And another part of Revelations, John writes, he heard a voice from heaven saying, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, for he knows that his time is short. Are you getting the point and waking up to the reality that we are in a great war, one of the greatest and most devastating wars that this universe will ever witness, the great controversy, the war between God and Satan, between good and evil, between truth and error, between light and darkness. And we are on the battleground in earth, in the midst of that war, and we have to choose a side. And there are only two sides. There is no neutral ground. And if we are in a war right now, we know that we are reaching the climax and nearing the peak of this war. 
I mean, John writes in his letter in the book of 1 John, he says, children, it is the last hour. And he wrote this 2,000 years ago. So if it was the last hour then, we are certainly living in the last seconds. And as my scripture that I chose today, Romans 13, 11, reads, Do this knowing the time, that it is already the hour for you to awaken from sleep. For now salvation is nearer to us than we believed. My friends, if Paul wrote this about 2,000 years ago, having this kind of sense of urgency, how much more should we be having a sense of urgency? In the book of Luke, it is recorded that Jesus says, watch out. Do not allow yourselves be, to be dulled by carousing and drunkenness and the worries of this life. He says, keep alert at all times. The Apostle Peter says, the end, end of all things is at hand. Be alert and sober-minded. We need to be awake and alert. Are you aware of what is going on in the condition of this world right now? And I don't mean just looking at it from a perspective of the world, but looking at it through scripture, through the eyes of God, through spiritual discernment. We all feel a sense of instability, don't we? Even my non-believer friends feel that there's something in the air and some sort of imminence, and they're going out and buying guns for self-protection because they believe that all hell is going to break loose. And if non-believers are thinking this, how much more should we be feeling this way, having the warnings in Scripture? How much more should we be preparing? And I don't mean by buying guns, but by going into the Word of God. We all feel the sense of instability, don't we? The shifting currents, the polarization, governments reaching for more and more control, the cry for justice. I mean, the widening gap between the haves and the haves not, the inflation, the economic instability, climate change, and think about some of the discussions that are happening around some of the major topics these days, like abortion, transgender, protests, gun control, shootings. And do you think that these topics are being discussed in love and peace? If anything, it is building up hostility and anger, distrust, confusion, and disconnect. My friends, if anyone tells you peace and safety, what does the Bible say? It says, don't listen to that person that says peace and safety because sudden destruction will come upon them. And so this is even before going into the next subject of the COVID pandemic. I mean, there is an overflow right now of mental illness in the United States. I mean, even in my clinic, I am seeing a rising number of patients coming in with depression and anxiety and loneliness. And this is not just my practice, it's all across the board. It is a fact that in the United States, there's a rising number of mental illnesses right now. The mental health care system, there's a high demand for it, a high demand for psychiatrists. The next pandemic is not going to be one of another virus. I think it's going to be one of mental illness. And this is not just in my professional relationships that I'm seeing it. It's in my personal relationships. I'm seeing it in my friends and family. And a higher number of these people going on anti-anxiety meds, antidepressants. What about the condition and the state of our church? Do you realize that there was a study done before the COVID pandemic? And this study shows that in the Protestant churches, there are more churches that are closing down than new churches that are opening. And you can be sure that since the pandemic, that number has gotten even higher. The membership in our Protestant churches are dwindling down. And since the pandemic, 
when we started to do virtual worship, some people have just never come back to the church since then. Even before the pandemic, and this is something more near and dear to my heart because it also relates to me, but people in my generation, people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s have been leaving the churches in masses. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. I mean, when I, if I grew up with 30 friends in my age at church, maybe five of them are still in the church faithfully serving the Lord. I mean, I'm sure some of you who are 20s, 30s, and 40s, you can relate. If you grew up in the church, you could probably name more people who have left the church that have then stayed in the church. And I think it's time that we really wrestle with the hard questions. And we ask ourselves, is it possible? Is it possible? I'm not saying it is, but we have to ask. Is it possible that the problem could be with our churches, that these young people are leaving? And I mean, it's going to take a lot to really remove our pride and look deep and really humble ourselves and get to the root of these questions. I mean, Jesus says, right, that lawlessness will abound and the love of many will grow cold. Is it possible that that's what's happening in our churches? Is it possible that we have allowed the world to come into our churches, the world ideologies, the world philosophies, the way of the world thinking, and has it come in and crept into our churches, and has that caused the love of many to go cold? Is it possible that maybe while we hold on to a form of godliness, that we deny its power, that we are extinguishing the flame of the Holy Spirit because we deny its power? the power of the gospel to truly transform lives and for people to find forgiveness. My friends, these are the realities that we're living in. You know, the human spirit can be resilient, but it only... It, after taking waves and waves of trauma and hardships, we start longing for something, the good old days, the good old times. And I think that part of that is the part of, part of that God has placed in our own hearts, right? Because he, we were never intended to live here. Our original home is Eden. When a time was perfect and we had perfect communion with God, walking and talking with God, and a part of us longs for that. A part of us longs for the second coming. A part of us longs for the new Eden when we will once again be with God. But during this time when people are having hardships and feeling a longing, people are going to try to fill this Eden with sex, drugs, alcohol, going out and buying sprees and buying things. And, you know, in and of itself, some of these things are not entirely bad, but it is when these things become the focus and the gods and the idols of our lives that it becomes a problem. But we know that that's not what our hearts are longing for. We know that it is only Jesus that can fill that void. Do you realize that we have more self-help books ever in like the history of humanity you go to a, uh, the bookstore and you look at the bookshelves and there are just books upon books upon books on self-help on self-help and I mean, I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on this but I have read many of those self-help books myself and some of them you know they do help they do give motivation and they inspire but there is a glaring difference between the self-help books and the Bible What is it that these self-help books promote? Self. It is in the word self-help. It promotes self-sufficiency, self-reliance, self-dependence. Some of these will go as far as making you into a god, saying that you can do all things, you can do whatever you want. If you believe in yourself, if you believe in it, you just have to think it and it will happen. Is that what the Bible teaches us? The Bible teaches us that we cannot trust ourselves, we cannot trust our own hearts, that we have to put our full trust into God, 
that we have to give our lives to God and on him and him alone do we depend and on him only do we rely for our courage, for our strength, we go to him. And we must find our resilience in him and him alone. And I believe that the way to do this is by becoming men and women of Scripture once again. All of Scripture, from the beginning to the end, it points to Jesus Christ, our Savior. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God, and through Him all things are being, it came into being. And it says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus was in there since Genesis, since the creation with God, and it is through him that all things came into being. The whole of Old Testament points to the coming of the Messiah. The whole New Testament talks about him being amongst us and his second coming. And at the end of Revelations, what does it say? It says, Jesus says, yes, I am coming quickly. It says, amen, come Jesus Lord. He is in the beginning and the end of scriptures, and all of it points to him. He is the Alpha and the Omega. If you are familiar with history, do you know what was the foundation, foundational principle behind the Protestant Reformation? It is sola scriptura. There's a period of history called the Dark Ages, which went on for centuries. And basically, during this period, your common person did not have access to scripture. Most people did not have access to the Bible because it was forbidden by the Pope. The Pope forbid it on account of death because he wanted control of the people's minds. He wanted them to follow his theology, his doctrines, his ideologies, and he knew that if people got a hold of scripture, they would be able to discover the truth and be set free from his control. But we have people that were enlightened who went to scripture and saw the truth, like Martin Luther, Wycliffe, Tinsdale, Jerome, and Huss, and at the cost of their lives, they spread the truth, and they tried to get the hands, the Bible in the hands of the common people. And it was at the cost of about hundreds of thousands, some sources saying maybe millions of people's lives that we now have this in our hands, in our homes, even on our phones. But I'm afraid that we are regressing back to the dark ages. Even though we have it, our young people are not really going through the scriptures. And a lot of times, you find it boring because there's so much stimulation in the world and distraction. And how did Jesus fight Satan when he was in the wilderness? So with scripture, he quoted, it is written. How will we do that if we don't know what is written? How will we distinguish between what is truth and error and what is light and darkness? I know we're running a little short on time, but is it okay if I share my personal testimony with you right now? About 15 years ago, I was walking down the path that was going to lead me away from God for many years. And I was born into an SDA family. I was raised in an SDA church and grew up in the SDA system. You know, I had a relationship with Jesus. But I started to get curious about the world, what the world had to offer me. And our enemy, Satan, 
is crafty. He is a wily foe. He is a master deceiver. He didn't present Eve with all the destruction that her action was going to have, the consequences. He presented the forbidden fruit and saying, it's just the fruit. Just take a bite. It's harmless. And so I started to compromise a little on the Sabbath. You know, I need to study. I'm busy. Or I study so hard, I need to take some break and just do my own thing. I started to compromise on attending church. I started to compromise on my devotional time and going through scripture with God. And then I started to compromise on the principles of God. And when you indulge in sin, your heart starts to become averse to God. And there starts to grow this aversion in your heart, in your heart towards God. And it's the strangest thing. Gradually, the church had done nothing wrong to me, but I started to feel bitterness towards the church. And then I started to think, wow, the church is full of hypocrisy. And then I started to feel, wow, the church is so judgmental. Even though there wasn't a specific person who was judging me, I started to feel that way. Do you know what is written in John? It says, this is the verdict. The light has come into the world, but people love the darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. And everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come to light because of fear that their deeds will be exposed. That what was happening in my mind. My deeds were evil, and I didn't want it to be exposed. And so I blamed it on the church, saying that the church is judgmental, when all along it was my own conscience. Well, eventually, you know, I started to leave the church. And then I started to almost look down on people in the church, thinking, uh, you know, they're so naive. And they created the, this bubble for themselves, and they think they're so pure. All the while thinking, oh, you know, I'm experienced now. I've tasted the world. I'm much wiser than the people in the church. And that is exactly the temptation that Satan threw to Eve also. Your eyes will be opened if you eat this fruit. You know, so I stopped reading the Bible altogether because it was displeasing to me. I felt like it just judged me a lot of times. And I felt like, wow, it's so restrictive and it's so boring now, like compared to everything else I'm experiencing in the world. And I stopped reading the Bible. I stopped going to church. And if anybody tried to talk to me about God, you know, if you weren't that close to me, I would just listen and nod my head. But if you were close to me, I would say, hey, like, can we stop talking about this? Because I don't want to get into an argument with you. And I hit my low point when people would ask me, do you believe in God? And I would tell them, I don't know. Maybe he exists. Maybe he doesn't. And I'll tell you something strange. When I would give that response to people of the world, they love that answer. They love it. They would say, that's a great answer. Because they don't like it when people have conviction about God. During this time, though, and I believe sincerely that I am here today by the grace of God and by the powers of a praying mother. How many of you are moms here? Praise God for all the moms in this place. Um, really, I think I said, you know, children could be one of the greatest gifts and blessings, and I think right there up with them is mothers. Uh, because if without mothers, we wouldn't even have children. And, you know, um, my wife, uh, with our child now, I have such a deeper love and appreciation for her. Because I see her giving of herself. 
and sacrificing her own body, breastfeeding this child, sacrificing her sleep, sacrificing her time and her priorities to nurture this child. And I think that's one of the closest uh, images that we could have on, like, on this earth of what Jesus' love could possibly be for us. And so I had a mom who prayed. I mean, even since childhood, I'd uh, wake up sometimes before my alarm and I'd go looking for my mom and she'd be in the same, same area where she'd pray every morning on her knees and she'd be praying for me and my brother. And she did this throughout my whole childhood. And even when I left for college, she would tell me she was praying for me. And I have no reason to doubt that because she, I'd seen her do it for decades. And so even when I was going through this dark period in my life, she would still tell me, I'm praying for you. And so mothers, I just want to say, I don't know where some of you are uh, with your children or not, but if you have any children who have maybe uh, wandered, continue to pray. Whether it takes you 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, your whole life, continue to pray because God listens to your prayers. During this time, I didn't know it at that time, but I was searching. I was traveling all over the world, and many times I would travel by myself. And on these travels, I would be trekking in the mountains miles away from another human being, just meditating, wondering what the meaning of life is, what the meaning, search for purpose. And, you know, I was devouring books by worldly philosophers, by scientists, by atheists, books on world religion, even books by New Age authors. And it was around this time that there was a small group of people who didn't really know me, but asked if I wanted to go through the Gospel of John with them. And they probably asked because they didn't know me that well. <laughs> and so, you know, I thought, why not? I'll do it. And so our plan was to go through a chapter a day. And, you know, at this time, I hadn't been praying, never, I haven't opened the Bible for 10 years, but I told God, God, if you're really out there, this is the last chance. If I don't feel anything if I don't find you, then pretty much you're dead to me. And this might be, this might be it. And as I read through the book of John, some of the truths that I learned in my childhood that, that I had been suppressing for so long started to resurface. Yeah. And when I was done with the book of John, I thought, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John again on my own. And I finally came face to face with Jesus on the cross. And I saw in myself Judas, the betrayer. I saw myself in the priest who mocked Jesus and denied that he was the son of God. I saw myself in the Roman soldiers who treated him cruelly. And in the crowds who mocked him. And I was just, my gut was just wrenched. But while I saw him on that cross with his arms wide open, I heard his voice saying, those who are thirsty, come to me and drink. Those who believe in me, out of their hearts will flow living rivers of life. And I finally saw myself in the thief on the cross who had led a life of sin deserving to be on that cross. And yet, he says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus tells him, truly, today I tell you, you will be with me in paradise. What he did, this thief did, was looked upon the Savior, believed in him, and accepted his, his sacrifice, and believed 
that the blood of Jesus cleansed his heart. And when I saw that love, that grace and mercy and long suffering, I was broken and I gave my life to Jesus. And since that moment, I have continued to hunger and thirst after my Savior, who I long to know more and more intimately each day. Friends, it was about four years ago now that I opened the book of John. After not having opened the Bible for about 10 years, and maybe with the exception of a day or two, I have not missed the day where I spend time in the word of God. You know, when I gave my life to Jesus, it wasn't a radical and instantaneous outward transformation. But there was a change in my heart. And through the years, as I search scriptures, new truths are revealed to me and new light is shed upon me. And there's conviction when I'm told I must give up this or that in my lifestyle. I must give up this habit or that habit. I must change the course of my life, and I must pursue a different course of my life. And I am far from being perfect today, and I am sure that I'm still walking in the darkness in some parts of my life. But I trust Jesus, and I continue to genuinely search his word. And I know that he will continue to shed light on my life. And as he does, I will continue to adjust my life as necessary. My friends, today, this is the conclusion. Let us awaken to the reality that we are in the midst of a war. Let us live with the seriousness and with the sense of urgency, knowing that the time is near. Let us be alert and awake so that we don't fall into the temptations or the traps of the devil. Let us be awake and alert, looking at the signs and times that we live in, not from the perspective of the world, but through the eyes of Scripture. Let us find our hope and put our trust in Jesus and find our resilience in Jesus Christ and in him alone. Amen. And let us do this by becoming man and woman once again of scripture. Let us saturate our minds with the word of God and let the might of God flow in and through us like a mighty river. Ontario Church, let us go forth being a light in our community, spreading the truth and doing it in love because Jesus is love. I invite all of you to stand for closing song.
Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our precious, loving Jesus, I want to thank you for your sacrifice. I want to thank you for your grace and love and mercy and kindness. I want to thank you for your word and help us to abide in your word and live in truth. In Jesus' name I pray all these things. Amen.